Welcome, friend. I am Merit Ansa, your dream coach and host of the Devoted Dreamers podcast. And I believe God has an unfolding plan for your life, a God-shaped dream just for you. But there are mountains to climb between you and that dream, like fear, comparison, imposter syndrome, and what if I mess this up? Or maybe the next right step is just evading you, or you're constantly feeling overwhelmed or stuck promise you are not alone. And that's why I'm here to bring you stories from sisters in Christ who have been there and have made it out on the other end. Stick around and you'll find a new episode every Wednesday morning and once a month a solo where I will coach you through the stages of following our God-shaped dreams and provide fuel for the fire that's already burning in your heart. If you're ready to find some real traction for your dream instead of sitting on the sidelines, subscribe to the show and then meet me back here every week for transformational tools to help you release the lies so you can freely show up in the world with your gifts, leaning on God in your weaknesses, and serving His kingdom with the dream He's given you. Hello, Dreamer. This is episode 223 and my final episode of season nine. I'm thrilled that you've joined me today for my conversation with the amazing Rachel Baker. I hardly ever do this, but I recorded the interview today and I loved it so much I wanted to get straight to recording the episode introduction. But before we get to all of that, I want to tell you about a free resource to help you exchange imposter syndrome for God's promises. This is called the Guided Scripture Reading Plan, and it'll take you through a series of hand-selected Bible verses to point you back to the one true God who heals our wounds and gives us strength for our everyday life and for our God-shaped dreams. This Guided Scripture Reading Plan is designed just for you to be completed in one sitting, hopefully, if you have like maybe 30 minutes for a quiet time. But if you're the journaling type or you like to follow rabbit trails in God's word, you might need a little extra time for this one. Or, you know, maybe you could do it in five minutes a day for approximately a week. All you have to do right now is grab the guided scripture reading plan. If you're a paper girl like I am, print it out, then pick up a Bible or two or three because the guide pulls from the ESV, the NIV, and my new favorite, the Passion Translation. You can get your free copy of the Guided Scripture Reading Plan, including my Dreamers Unleashed Manifesto at bit.ly slash scripture plan. That's B-I-T dot L-Y slash scripture plan. You'll also get some follow-up emails from me one a day after you sign up to walk you through some additional exercises related to overcoming imposter syndrome and using the guide. I am that pumped about you getting free from what's holding you back so you can move forward on the dream God has put on your heart. All right, on to today's episode. One of my favorite things about podcasting, it's been such a gift over the last like five and a half years, is getting to have conversations with these amazing women of God who are honest about the challenges in their journey and are willing to share that with me and you. I connected with Rachel Baker in the comments of an Instagram post where she was asking for a chance and a cheerleader, and something in my heart leapt, because don't we all need those things? Well, Rachel is the author of Deconstructed, a Bible study guide for the woman who feels overwhelmed or ill-equipped to study the Word of God. She talks about that in this conversation. She's a pastor's wife and director of women's ministries who believes in leading through vulnerability and authenticity. She is a cheerleader herself, an encourager, and a sometimes drill sergeant. She serves the local church alongside her husband, Kyle, in northern Nevada, and they have two amazing kiddos and three doggies who I got to meet on the call. Rachel is fueled by coffee, tacos, and copious amounts of cheese. She is my kind of gal. I loved the honesty of this conversation. She really is, um, as she says in her bio, leading through vulnerability and authenticity, and I'm thrilled this is the one I got to close out the season with. If it sparks something in you, I hope you'll share it with a friend. My three takeaways to listen for in this one. Number one, God's rebuke when Rachel begins to doubt her calling. I'm pointing this out because that's exactly what it should be, a rebuke, if the dream is really from him. Takeaway number two, what to do if you're prone to great ideas, but you often face discouragement in the messy middle. And number three, what it looks like to fight for your belief in your identity in Christ. I'm so glad you're here today. Thank you again for sharing your time with me. And now it's my privilege to bring you this conversation with Rachel Baker. 
Hey, Rachel. Hello. Thank you so much for having me on today. I'm thrilled to have you. I'm thrilled that this is my um, kind of closing out season nine episode for the Devoted Dreamers podcast. So thanks for saying yes to a random stranger on Instagram who wanted to be your friend. You know what? Random strangers on Instagram who want to be my friend. <laughs> Sometimes they're my favorite, as long as they're not creepy. <laughs> I promise not to be creepy. <laughs> no, I, the women never are. The women never are. True. True. <laughs> well, Rachel, I really want you to um, share with me and the listener, what is your God-shaped dream? Oh, gosh. Well, so um, before you hit record, we got to talk a little bit about our life journey and where God has planted us, um, which is a whole huge story um, in and of itself. But um, as I shared with you, I have a background in journalism and I'm a writer and um, just the way that God has moved me from place to place to place in ministry and uh, with writing and developing curriculum and things like that. So ultimately I have to say my God sized dream is, uh, it is to be less of me and to be more of him. That is like that big idea of spiritual formation, but how that works out in my own life is to really use the tools and the gifts that he's given me uniquely to glorify him. And that is my, my big, big dream. And the coolest thing, because I have such a passion for writing and communicating and um, sharing what God has done in my own life is to use those tools through writing and blogging and um, little micro posts on Instagram and hanging out with people on podcasts and just talking about what he's done in my life um, and how he's uniquely gifted each of us to share what he's done. Um, we all get to be evangelists in our own little corner of the earth and share who he is through our own experiences. So um, I'm just, I feel really lucky that he lets me write because that's my passion. Um, and I realize now after a long, long journey that, that he actually gave me that passion, but um, it's so cool that that's my dream that he lets me use it in that way to glorify him. Yeah. And you probably never would have guessed that it would have looked like this in 2021. Never in a million years. I actually, so I, like I said, my background's in journalism and I actually started as a technical writer and, um, my husband, when he was called into ministry, I had to kind of shift gears because we had just walked through the recession and I could not find a job, um, writing, anywhere really. And I was like, I'll take anything. Um, so I shifted gears into marketing and I told my husband, uh, you know, I just really feel like it's time for me to lay down this childish dream of mine to write. And he just looked at me, he was like, what are you talking about? And I was like, well, I mean, you know, I, I can't use it in ministry. I can't really use it to glorify God's kingdom. And I definitely am not, you know, I can't use it as a financial contribution. So I'm just going to stop writing. And I'm like, I'll go to work and let you be a youth pastor. And um, that will be my contribution to the kingdom. And it will be my financial support of you. And he looked at me like I was actually taking crazy pills. He was like, um, I don't think that he, and he points to our bookshelves. He's like, so do you think all these people, um, they have no space or they're no contribution to the kingdom of God? I'm like, oh, but they're theologians and I'm not. So because I'm not a theologian, I can't, I can't do that. And it took a long time and God really correcting me to understand that I could take my little gift and my little passion, my little dream and use it in a way that, yeah, no, it's a ministry and it glorifies God. So it's been a very transformative process and he still has to correct me all the time because I quit. I'm a, I'm a big quitter. I'm like, that's it. I quit. Mm. So. Why do you think, like, what is it inside you that kind of, cause I'm a not finisher. So I understand oh. being mm. a quitter. I'm a strong not finisher. <laughs> I'm, a very, very, I'm a strong starter. Um, but I get tons of good ideas and you should see, like, I keep a note 
an ongoing voice memo notes in my phone and in my notepad on my phone. And um, of course the shower is where my most brilliant mm-hmm. ideas come to me. And I'm like, why don't I have like a squeegee board that's waterproof in the shower? This is where brilliance happens. <laughs> totally. uh, like somebody please patent that, send me a waterproof squeegee board. I, does it exist? Right. Um, I'm sure it does. Uh, but I, I, I think what happens to a lot of us, especially if you're creative is we're dreamers. Um, and dreamers I think are pretty good starters, but dreamers tend not to be great finishers because we meet discouragement in the middle, especially if that dream is like, for me, like a full length book. I've been, I have, I've been sitting on a full length book for literally five years. Um, and I can't seem to get over the hurdle because it, I find discouragement in the middle. And that's why when I, when we met on that Instagram post, it was, you know, I need a chance and a cheerleader because in the middle is where I get stuck. Um, in the middle is where I become so, and, and we become internally focused self-loathing, like, oh, you know, why, why does the world need a book on discouragement? There are a billion books on discouragement and she said it better and she's a massive platform. So why does my voice matter? And, um, God has really, really had to rebuke me of that attitude, but it, but it is an attitude that I return to. And then I have to meet that rebuke and I need cheerleaders to kind of shake it up and tell me, you know, Rachel, what are you doing? Why are you sitting on that? Why are you waiting? Absolutely. And I think I listened to a podcast episode that you were on with another friend where you got to do that for her in starting her podcast. Like we need that outside voice to be like, hey, you're still the same person that you were a year ago and you have good gifts to offer the world. And so just because you've found your way to a place of discouragement or, I mean, it's going to be hard, right? If you're doing something you've never done before. And so we need somebody to be like, you can. Yes, we, you know, and I, every, everything I write about, or the message is always the same. I'm always talking about the need for Christian community. And, um, and I love, I love that social media has become a tool that we can use to build each other up when we use it properly. I think it's great. Like, look at this. We met over social media and we know each other and we're buddies. And this is such a cool tool. Um, because the reality is if you're creative and maybe this extends beyond that, um, discouragement is a real thing and we can get so stuck in our heads, um, and stuck in our own, just the rhythms of life. You know, if, if you think about it, we could just be consumed by laundry and dishes and wiping noses and motherhood or being a spouse, or if you're in ministry, just fully that, you know, and we forget, well, yeah, but God uniquely created me. He, I am a unique individual and to not fully step into the full gifts that he's given me, it's wasting. And, um, you know, I, I, I know women who, are dancers and singers and artists and, you know, and people who are even more technical, you know, their, their minds are more logical and strategic and, and they can use what they've been given to ultimately share the gospel and love on people and make God more famous. And they have the ability to use all of those tools. But if we get stuck in the middle, we forget the big purpose in our calling. think that's so common you know to and and I love what you said about um like our unique gifting and who God made us and I think the thing that's like God's impressed upon my heart about that is that if you if he's given you something and you're sitting on it or ignoring it that somebody else misses out And it's really hard for us to see that in the moment because it is that voice of like, well, who would listen to me or who would want this over the other thing that sounds just like it or so I say in my head. Mm -hmm. Um, But it diminishes like how amazing God is in his plan for his people to say, well, my voice isn't needed or 
right. you know, nobody would listen. It's like, no, uh, somebody's going to miss out right. when you say no or not right now. Right. Actually, that is, that's such a good point. When I first returned to writing and it started with just this little bitty baby blog, um, and you know, and, and every word was brutal because I just thought, why am I doing this? It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. And my attitude was so broken because I really believed it didn't matter. I was just like another blogger out of all the bloggers. And I'm like, who cares? Um, but it ministered to the women in my community who knew me and the, the words that I shared in vulnerability and authenticity with them landed on their hearts in a way that was more profound than if it had have been, you know, a, a bigger teacher, somebody who is out there, you know, and not relational with them. And that gave me the, um, the inspiration or whatever it is to keep going to realize, oh no, you know what? I'm alive. I'm alive today, 2021. And God has given me women in my community that I'm friends with and that I have relationship with. And however that looks to minister to their heart, to be a cheerleader for them, to champion them at their worst. And I need that also that again, that again, that's that whole community thing. And even understanding that in ministry. So my husband and I are in ministry and there's one of him and there's one of me, and then there's our church. And so when you expect us to like, we can't have personal and intimate relationship with every single person in our church. That's why there's the need for small groups and community. That's why all of us stepping into the fullness of who God has created us to be is so important because there is a person standing behind you waiting for you to take that step in faith so that you could share that with them because that's going to give them the courage to do the same. They need you to minister to them. And so each of us today is so valuable and so important. And we need to wake up to our God dreams and wake up to the callings on our lives and step into that as scary as it is. Right. As scary as it is. God's going to meet you there. He will. He will not leave you. So talk about the scary thing you're working on right now. Okay. And we're going to have so many scary things. <laughs> <laughs> um, so you know how I said, I am not a theologian. Like I'm not I am not classically trained. I did not go to Bible college. I have a degree in journalism and a minor in French. Why? I don't know. Uh, no one knows. But I am right now, I'm laying out my second deconstructed book last year because of one of the girls in the small group that I got to lead when we lived in Salt Lake City secretly. I don't even know how she saw it. She tweeted that I was publishing a book and I was like, I wasn't ready for that. And she's like, well, now you have to do it. It's like, oh my goodness, you're the worst friend ever. I love you so much. Um, so last year, I, like right in the middle of the pandemic, released Bible study guide, a Bible study guide deconstructed. And um, the whole purpose of that, what where that came from was out of a small group where I was ministering to women in Salt Lake City and they had no biblical foundations. And they're like, we can't, we don't know how to read a Bible. We don't know how to do a Bible study. Like we have no foundation for this. And I, I kind of thought to myself and a friend really encouraged me and challenged me to think about it in a way of like starting with a blank canvas. What, how would we teach the Bible? If you'd never been to Sunday school, if you've never, if you didn't even trust the Bible, you know, if your, your relationship with the Bible was not built on a foundation of trust how do you study its word and how do you let it pierce your heart when you don't trust it? Um, and so we really started stripping back some of these bigger, like theological concepts and, you know, some of the terms that are, that can be used in church and become very Christianese and make it really accessible for somebody that didn't have a foundation. So we kept it, we tried, I think, I think we did, we tried to keep it under a hundred word, a hundred pages and keep it really, really, you know, foundational. And so that started this whole like conversation about how do we read the Bible? How do we understand the word of God? 
What's the history of the Bible? What are the different types of literature that you're looking at? Um, how can we be critical in our reading? Those types of questions. Um, and then I realized, wow, because I don't have a seminary degree, there are other areas of our Christianity that I, you know, when people throw out terms like evangelism or apologetics, we kind of go, well, what is that? What does that really mean? And I grew up in the church and I remember always saying, I'm not an evangelist because my idea of what evangelism looked like was to stand on a street corner with a big sign and a megaphone and tell everybody that they needed to repent. That's, that's what I thought evangelism was. I did not know that evangelism was authentic conversations done in love. No idea. Um, and so recently I've had a lot of women kind of talking to me about the difference between evangelism and apologetics. So evangelism, like if you make a statement, like, um, I have faith in God, that would be evangelism. And then at, in the equation, why blank, 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 that's apologetics. So understanding the why behind the faith. And so I've started doing this deep dive for the last month. Um, I'm still pretty much in the deep dive. Um, so my brain hurts. But really understanding like the most basic principles of apologetics, how can we engage in direct, deep conversation about the why, you know, how can we look at some of because apologetics, like you, you can get 30 seconds into an apologetics study and complete, like your eyes glaze over and you start foaming at the mouth. You're like, what? what are we talking about? What, what was that? Like, I, you know, what are these words? Hold on, pause. I have to go get my dictionary because it's so, it's so heady. And if you're not classically trained, if you don't have a biblical background, if you, you know, didn't grow up in the church, if you're new to the faith, you're like, these people are nuts. I don't know what they're saying. And I just really don't believe it should be like that. I really believe that these concepts need to be concepts that are um, applicable to our daily lives. We need to understand how to use the, it's a tool. It's a tool to engage in deep intellectual conversation about the, about, I have faith, that statement, I have faith. And, um, and so I just don't want it to be a scary topic. So that's my, that's my big, big, huge dream topic, dream project right now. Um, it's to take Deconstructed to its second series. And I have a third one that I already am kind of like, ooh, I know where I'm going next. Um, so that eventually it'll be a little three, three part series, but uh, that's the big one. And <laughs> I'm, I have a crazy goal to have it published and ready for distribution by summer. So if you guys don't hear from me for the next four months, I'm not dead. <laughs> Check also. <laughs> also. Wow. So when you said I need a chance and a cheerleader, was it about this? Yes, it is about, um, and you know what is so cool. I've actually had, um, I've ha okay. So this was, this was the, like the big kind of kicker for me. I couldn't find any female apologists. The women at my church want to do an apologetics Bible study. And they're like, and we use, um, we use an online platform. So we have a subscription based online platform. And I looked and looked and like, there was not one, um, one female apologist. I also deeply believe in, you know, I think it's really important to have studies that show all different walks of life that are set in urban settings that are, you know, we have teachers that are people of color. Like, I think that's very, very important. Representation matters in our studies. Um, and so I was like, there's nothing there's, there's like 10 white guys. And while I really know what they're saying is deep and profound, there needs to be more. Um, and so the very first few weeks, what I was really doing, it wasn't even studying apologetics. It was seeking out apologists um, who are maybe not as mainstream or not as well known. And it's been really cool because they are so responsive and willing to have conversations with me. 
they don't know me from Adam. They're like, okay, some chick from Nowheresville, Nevada wants to talk to me about apologetics. Let's do it. And I'm like, great. Um, and I, again, I think that goes back to God can use all different people in all different ways to, again, make him, make himself known. And I think this is just one tool and the women at my church are super hungry for it. And so I can't wait to bring it all together, tie it all together and, and deliver it to them. Like here, this is my, I'm so excited. Um, but, but because I get stuck in the middle, that cheerleader, you know, I, I know myself well enough to know, wow, I'm going to need people that are like, Hey, how's it going? Hey, do you have, you know, your manuscript finished? Did you send it to your editor? <laughs> We're like, no, we're not talking. Right now. <laughs> Stop <laughs> bothering me. <laughs> I love you. You know, it's like, I mean, and that's it. Like, that is so, you know, I think that's a lot of writers and a lot of creatives. We get stuck in that middle. So. Well, so let's dig in a little bit. Like, what's the fear? Like, what is... Um... What goes on inside of you that makes that um, halting happen? What are you afraid of? Oh, gosh, um, that I am not enough. It is this, you are not smart enough. Who do you think you are? Um, I mean, and I have, you know, I think about my, my own spiritual journey, the years that I spent away from God, um, just really like not interested in a relationship with him, not interested in God whatsoever. And it, those are things that I know he uses. And yet those are also areas of my life where I'm fragile. And so um, I really, you know, for a very long time, I really didn't think I was very smart. I thought, you know, I, I can write and I can craft words, but like, I'm not an intellectual. Um, I don't understand deep concepts. Like I'm very, you know, I kind of, and I, as a little girl and a, a middle schooler and a high schooler, I kind of pressed into the whole Valley girl concept. I'm from Southern California. I was like, I can just be a dumb blonde and, you know, I can be cute and be quiet. Um, and, you know, never rock the boat. Um, and all of those things getting really, really critical about the why behind our faith, uh, wanting to challenge people in their own faith to go, Hey, like you may have come to faith emotionally, which that my return to faith was an emotional return. He hit my heart first before he hit my head, but encouraging believers to say, Hey, that heart knowledge is beautiful and should be nurtured and be grateful for that heart knowledge. But also you need to stoke your head knowledge. Do not sit in the heart knowledge and only hang out there. Stoke your head knowledge because the world needs you to be a critical thinker. The world needs you. The people that have not come to faith yet, the people that are opposed to God, and it's, it's on the basis of their own intellectualism, they, they need you to be able to connect with them in a critical way. So, so while the heart knowledge, like that is, I can sit and rest in my heart relationship with God and sit and rest in the, the spirit where it's just like, oh, you know, and have those meditative moments where I'm like, I can feel the presence of God so heavy on my life. I'm like, okay, Lord, I hear you. I'm responding. And it is here. It's emotion where your eyes well up with tears and you get the goosebumps and you're like, I don't know how you're doing what you're doing, but I feel you doing it. And it's powerful stuff. I don't want to diminish that. But I think that when we're looking at culture and we're looking at just where, where we're going as a society, we need to stoke our intellect. And that's scary to me because I've always kind of been like, I can like have a buffer with sarcasm and humor and, um, you know, and I can really press into the dumb blonde thing. Like I can, I can go there and be just totally comfortable with that. And God has just been, you know, I feel like he's constantly correcting me. Like 
that's not who I designed you to be. You, that's not even who you are. That's a lie you believed about yourself. Where that came from, we don't know. Um, you know, it's probably some brokenness in my childhood and in my path and, um, or in my past. And so, yeah, I deal with that fear. Uh, but I know that on the other side of being disciplined and diligent and doing what he's told me to do, I get a little less afraid. Um, and that's where that cheerleader, those having women to come alongside you and be like, no, you can do this. You can do this. And to just keep saying that I, it is transformative. It does. It makes you braver to do the thing that your heart wants to do, but you're so afraid to do it. Totally. And I always say that sometimes it is just stepping into it. The thing that feels totally. Yeah completely out of like possibility for you. It's what? like, he's there. And if he's told you to do it, he won't leave you there by yourself to no. flounder around. Like, no, he but, won't. Yeah. He so never honest. has. Well, and I'm like, what? He, I always joke, God must have the best sense of humor. <laughs> like, why out of like, I think about the girls that I grew up with and I'm like, what, why would, why did you pick me for ministry? I'm a mess. I have foot and mouth syndrome. I say things and I'm face blind. So I can't, I have no idea who you are. So I'm like, this is the, I'm the worst. I shouldn't be in ministry. And he's like, well, we're going to put her in ministry. And I'm like, that's funny. That's, that's hilarious. So, you know, it's like Moses, I, yeah. you know, that's totally fine. God's got it. <laughs> can't public speak. I'll find someone for you. Great. Yes. Well, like, is there a scripture that kind of supports you in this, reminds you of who he is, who you are, what he's called you to do and helps you move forward? Yeah. I always go back to Philippians 4.13. It's kind of, I know it's like coffee mug scripture. We have it on embroideries over your house, but just the, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And it is it's remembering um, that he's the strength. You know, I don't even have to like muster that much strength to be able to function and, and do the big projects and push through the middle and push through discouragement because he's the one strengthening me to do it. And he's the one who assigned me to the task anyways. So when, when I'm in like the absolute depths of despair, I, I do. I have to clean. I have to clean to his word. I have to go back to the gospels. I have to read the epistles. I have to, I have to spend, I mean, and we should be doing those things anyways, but it's interesting when I am really, really struggling how much I'm like, oh yeah. Um, I just need to sit in the truth and the truth, the truth will set you free. Uh, but for real, it really will. It give, it reminds you, it's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. I am not the God of outcome. That's not, I'm not God and I'm not in charge of outcome. I'm responsible with the task. That's it. And it kind of takes that, um, that tendency that we have to be egotistical away. It's like, that's not, I'm not responsible for the outcome. I'm just responsible to be disciplined and diligent. And he's, he's going to weave that all together in the way that he sees fit. Um, and I don't have to worry about it. And that does take a lot of pressure off. It does, it does make you or allows us to step into our dreams without worrying too much about outcome. Yeah. You know. And then you have to remind yourself that again tomorrow. Every day. That's a daily <laughs> reminder. Yes. I, I literally I have a quote up above my desk that is literally that reminder where we it is a reminder to stay faithful and stay diligent. Because every day I want to, you know, yeah. lay on the ground and do nothing. <laughs> totally. <laughs> well, I, you talked about Deconstructed. I wanted you to um, share that you have a little offer for the listener. Yes. And I think we determined that it is, the offer code is DREAM. We'll correct it if it's wrong, but I'm pretty sure that is. I'll, I'll make it DREAM. We're going it's with DREAM. dream. Mm -hmm. If it wasn't DREAM before, it is DREAM now. 
Um, and that that is a discount code that if you would like to pick up a copy of Deconstructed, that will get, I think it cuts off a percentage or something like that. So you can grab that. And um, is that from your I, website? It is. It's directly from my website. You can find it on my Instagram. That is the easiest place to find the direct link um, or my website. And I, I want to encourage those of you that are listening. This is the best. Okay. I don't know that it's the best, but it is a really, really good gift to keep in your purse. So, and, and I kept it small for a reason because this is, it's lightweight and it's tiny and you can throw it in your satchel if you have one, um, you know, your crossbody bag. And when you're talking to, when you're sharing your faith, when you're talking to women who are maybe new to the faith or maybe stuck um, and need a little tool to help them take their next steps or dive a little bit deeper into their Bible study, the way that this guide is formulated, it's really like a step-by-step -step process to help shake things up and look at the word from different angles and different approaches. But it's, it's also pretty. And if you're anything like me, pretty matters. And you don't want, I remember when I was writing this, my husband like dropped a textbook onto my desk and I was like, one, no woman will be carrying that in her back. Two, it's size six font. So forget that three, it's ugly. So, um, so I so move on, sure. <laughs> moving on. I so love we, it. We did like, we made pretty things happen, um, in there and it's really good just to give as a gift. So I do, I think I have a two for one code, um, and I'll share that with you guys too. So I would encourage you to get one to give as a gift. Christmas is around the corner. Yes. Okay. Black Friday is coming up. Yes. Yeah. Be so, Ooh, I'm done. I actually did. I, I, <laughs> I'm so proud of me. Good for you. I've done a little, I've done more than I've ever done. This sort now of following, stuff. falling into this trap again. I know what happens when you wait. Rachel, it has been awesome to hear about your story, about what God's doing in you. Um, I'm really excited about your apologetics book. And I hope that the listeners get a chance to check out Deconstructed. I think I might be checking that out too. Um, but I would love for you to close us um, in this conversation, just uh, reflecting back on before you said yes to this God dream compared to now, how has he transformed you in that yes? Oh, that is such a big question. And um I think what it really has to boil down to is, uh, his peace because before I stepped into that God sized dream, before I really understood that the, the dreams in my heart were actually not my own dreams. They were, they were implanted by God and breathed by the Holy spirit. I felt very confused about who it was, what my identity in Christ was, what I was supposed to be doing with my life. And I kept, I kept going, I just want to know, just tell me what it is so that I can do it because I'll do it, but I need to know. Um, and it's so surprising that often that recipe is already within us. It's already there. Uh, and so once I started understanding that the dreams that I had and the gifts that I had and the things that weighed on my heart and the, the nagging things that would keep me up at night that I could actually use those to share Jesus with others. Um, it gave me a, a strange confidence where I was like, this isn't my confidence. This doesn't come from me, but it's also an urgency to, to take what I've been given and go, okay, Lord, like I understand that my time on this earth is finite help me be a good steward of my gifts, help me to remain urgent when I want to feel stuck in the middle and discouraged. And ultimately it just, it does come to that peace where when I feel peaceful, I know that I'm on that right path. And if I feel really disrupted or that peace is lacking, then I know I have, that something's off and I have to get real quiet and maybe not work for a couple of days and just spend time with him, take long walks and spend time journaling and in prayer so that I can realign with what he wants me to do. 
Uh, so that's, that's kind of the way it manifests in my own life. And I, and I think that is common for a lot of people. If you don't feel that peace, then it might, it might require you to get quiet and do some time, spend some time seeking and determining what's robbing you of that peace so that you can realign with what his calling is for your life. Don't forget, grab your copy of the guided scripture reading plan to get into God's word for help with overcoming imposter syndrome. This tool will walk you through the Bible verses that reveal where you've been stuck or believing lies and then point you back to the one true God for healing. I am giving away this tool for free because I want you to be free. That link again is bit.ly slash scripture plan. Download it today.